Hello, I'm Mark Diano. And I'm Desiree Hadley, and welcome to episode four of Hold the Line with Mayor Raj J. Baraka. Now, Mayor, today we're talking about the COVID-19 vaccine, violence right. in Newark, and also kids returning to virtual learning here in Newark, which happened this week. Right. So the first question I have for you is, with the COVID-19 vaccine, the clinical trial is happening here in Newark, um, what do you say to people who feel like this uh, trial happening here in the city is using our community or members of the community as, you know, experiments? I understand that. Um, I do want to address first this kind of group. They put out a flyer that said uh, the mayor is doing this, and then they went and had a rally at University Hospital. That by itself could sh tells you how convoluted this thing is, you know, because if, it was, if we were putting it out, they should have been at City Hall, but they know that wasn't true. So they purposefully and deliberately tried to throw people off. And they went out there with a bunch of suburban anti-vaccine uh, folks and, and, and the folks that participated in here, highly political folks to try to use this as an opportunity to, uh, you know, just really conflate things and create issues here in the city as they usually do. But, uh, you know, what's, what's obvious is that the city of Newark has no authority to authorize any vaccine trials. We're not a hospital, we're not a pharmaceutical company, we're the city government. Mm -hmm. They can partner with the hospital and do uh, voluntary things on their own. We can have a position on it, obviously, and our, we made our position clear. And people have a right to be afraid, to be fearful, right. considering the history uh, of things that have been going on with vaccines and other things in this country, and experimental drugs and so forth and so on with black and brown and poor communities. So people have a right to be uh, fearful. But, but I, I would say that, uh, you know, if, if you feel that way, you should not do it. And, that, and if, like we said, and if you're, if you're somebody who thinks that they want to do it, that you should get all of the information possible on it so you can make a decision that's informed about that. But it's completely voluntary. and It's happening in 90 other hospitals around the country. It's just not happening in Newark. And, and the, the irony of it is most of the trials are happening in, in suburbs, in communities that are not of color. Uh, and it's difficult to get people of color to participate because we're afraid to be in it, and we should be. Uh, uh, and we're gonna continue to uh, be that way because, I mean, nothing has changed historically to prove otherwise. Uh, the, and so that's, that's really the dilemma that we're in uh, because of the distrust in government and distrust in what's been going on makes it difficult for us to participate in these things. And so I would tell people uh, to be leery, to be fearful, uh, and, and get F information and education about any of these things and all of it, you know, until, you, until you're sure. And if you're not interested in science of it, then you shouldn't participate anyway. Right. Like, you shouldn't go over there anyway for money or for other reasons. Don't let people cajole you, uh, 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 bribe you into participating in something that you don't feel comfortable about participating in because you need money. You shouldn't do that, right? If you're not interested in the science of it, then you should stay away from it, period. Is, is that your issue? The, the issue is really that they're, they're, they're buying participation, and so they reach the most vulnerable people, right? On the other hand, if they didn't do that, and they didn't make it available to the most vulnerable people, there could be criticism that went the other way. Well, you're withholding it from the people that need sure. it the most. And how do you rectify that? Yeah, and the science is not complete either. So you'd have not tried it on different demographics to see how it affects people in different demographics. So yes, the, the flip side of that is true, but you can't get past history. You can't get past, it's like somebody's been beating you and beating you and beating you, and then they invite you over to their house for dinner. Mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna say, wait, I don't wanna go over there, they're gonna beat me, right? And no matter what you say, it's not gonna convince people that that happens unless that something else is going to happen unless there's a pattern created where that does not happen or, or somebody else is, is offering or they're doing it, doing it differently. The only point I want to get across is that the city is not responsible for it. The city has nothing to do with it at all. We can't uh, validate it or, or, or say that, you know, it's good. We don't even know what it is. We don't know the science of it. We don't know the background of it. We don't know where it's coming from. We don't know anything about it except that it's Moderna. Uh, and, and, and Rutgers University. I do, uh, you know, uh, think that uh, the, 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 the executive there, the, 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 the chairperson, the director of the hospital, direct, uh, Dr. Elmerhall, 
is a solid individual, you know, and he's uh, taking the, the vaccine himself. I think that's noble of him to do that. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, so he's trying to make a point that he thinks that this is safe. You've right. had a good relationship with him and, and they've been very helpful through the whole COVID uh, crisis. And prior to that, has this put a strain on that relationship, your position on this? No, not at all. We, we had a conversation about it. He's clear. I told him to put out a press uh, or release himself, right? I said, listen, you know, you should put out, you know, what, what you think is going to happen and, and, and what you believe the facts are and tell the people that you're, you're getting the, the vaccine I- itself. And maybe people will believe that and, and do it and maybe people won't. But there's no way to get around the barrier of historical uh, violations of people's human rights. Uh, in this country, there's no way to get around it, and people are just not going to trust it, and, and they're right not to trust it. You know, my family members don't trust it. If you ask people around here, are you going to take the vaccine? Most people tell you no, or they're scared, or they're leery of it, because they have a distrust of government, and, and, and rightfully so. Uh, and, and that puts uh, a, a serious pro- poses a serious problem to where we are, particularly since black and brown people are getting this the most and are dying from it more than anybody, uh, as I said in the press release. So it's a, it is a dilemma that we find ourselves in. When, when schools open back up for in-person learning, do you foresee this vaccine being one of the requirements for kids to go back to school or? Probably, I mean, listen, <clears throat> there's, this, there's this argument that people keep bringing up on the live all the time. And uh, I'm not opposed to people saying what they believe. I just don't like people to hi- try to hijack or what we're doing, trying to push a message. They're trying to hijack it for their own purposes. They don't give their name, they don't give a picture. It's probably some uh, suburban uh, group that is interested in these anti-vaccine people, anti-flu shot people, all these folks posing as black folks. And, and that's what happens. But at the end of the day, I don't think the government should force anybody right. to take a vaccine at all. They should not force people. You can't corral people and make them go to the doctor and get a shot. Right. I think that should not happen, right? Mm. But what people have, but people, what, what will happen is what normally happens, they're going to make it a requisite for you to bring your child to school, like any vaccination. In order for you to get on airplanes, they're going to make you do this thing. In order to go into certain people's countries, they're going to say it. Around the world, you're not going to be able to travel unless you have these vaccines. That's what's going to happen. And that's what's, that is going to immediately make people take the vaccine uh, simply because they need the convenience of doing all the things they normally wanted to do. Right. So I think that's going to make people do it mm-hmm. uh, ultimately. But I, I don't think it's, uh, people should be forced. Uh, the flip side of that, however, is you are in a community of people. Right. right? So when you say, I don't want to take the vaccine, and you go into a school when everybody else has taken it or a lot of people have taken the vaccine, then those people, parents, don't want their children around you. Right. So. Whoever's in charge has to really figure that out, right? And, and that's why, for the most part, in order to go to school, you have to take vaccination shots now. And, it's, and there are exceptions to it in school. There are exceptions to it, religious exceptions, other kind of exceptions. But for the most part, you have to do it. Yeah. And do you, th- I mean, as a parent, I would be a little, I, I am a little nervous about because we don't know what it, what it will look like or what the side effects are. So do you think parents should... It, it's okay for parents who feel, you know, a little nervous about like giving sure. their kids. You know? Absolutely. Especially, I mean, what I just laid out, especially now, I think this stuff is highly politicized. Mm. I think this whole right. environment is highly politicized. And I can see, you know, the president uh, uh, trying to expedite a vaccine quick, quicker than normal to get uh, to this election, you know, to get yeah. it before this election. And right. that's dangerous. Yeah. That's dangerous. Let's move on to violence. Um, yeah. So the murder rate, which is really the way everybody marks violence, uh, right. is up 26% in the country, down 26% here. So right. we're going in the opposite direction. But you know, speaking of like national political campaigns, urban violence has n- never been an issue. Uh, nobody really seems to tackle urban violence. It, it seems to be uh, an issue that in, in my lifetime, has never been a campaign issue. Right. That must be dismaying to you. Right. It is. I mean, if the majority of the people are black and brown, if you had thousands of young white children dying in every major city in America, 
it would be a crisis. It would be a public health crisis, mm -hmm. which is why we try to tackle it as a public health crisis in Newark, a public health dilemma, a disease. You have 70 people getting shot over the weekend in some cities, 100 people getting shot over the weekend, 15, 16 people dying in a weekend, right? And uh, in, in some cities around the country. And if you add that up, uh, those become excess deaths. So you probably have more excess deaths in our community than, than, than people died in the, in, in the Vietnam War, right? And, and stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it, it is way past epidemic proportions and it needs to be addressed. Uh, and it's not being addressed. And, and, and so what happens is you got all these law and order and right wing folks who address it with police. Right. And it creates this environment where we have the police are adding to the problem as opposed to helping resolve the problem. And the irony of that is the police become necessary in the in 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 calculating a resolution to the problem. Uh, and so people in charge of these cities have a complex set of issues to deal with and, and trying to figure this out. But on the Democratic side, actually, you got to go back to Bill Clinton. On the Democratic side, it never seems that the Democrats address the urban violence. They, you know, in this election, they're talking about riot violence and things like that. But right. that's a whole different, that's a whole different, unique topic. Sure. They never address the urban violence and the kind of solutions that you've talked about. It never right. becomes a national issue. Why do you think that is? Uh, because they're, they're scared to, for the most part, and they're out of touch. They're scared to offend people and they're scared to deal with the real issues. And the real issues are endemic and systemic. And to be able to address those issues says something particularly uh, about the country as a whole that they also are a part of. So they can't isolate it and say this is a Republican issue because it isn't. It's, it's, it's not a Republican issue. It's an issue of this country. And, and, and to deal with all of the, the issues of poverty and race and and things that have been happening in these communities that birth this kind of violence uh, and any amount of money that it's going to take to invest to change it is a piece that people don't want to get in front of. Right. So the Republicans are, are, are resigned to the idea that it is endemic, that is that it is uh, genetic to individuals. And so the only way you solve that is by beefing up the police, militarizing police, putting more money in police going in, in these communities and with this law and order Richard Nixon approach, mm -hmm. which has never worked, uh, and browbeat and beat the hell out of the people in the community, violate their constitutional rights and their civil rights, uh, 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 and, and, and somehow that's going to reduce crime, but it has not proven to do that consistently over a period of time. I guess the tough question is, do the Democrats take the black vote for granted, and so therefore they don't look at these issues as having to raise because they're going to get the black vote anyway. Well, I do think they take the black vote for granted. Absolutely. I think the Democratic Party does take the black vote for granted. But it's, it's incumbent upon us to create these kind of solutions and put it in people's face in authority and in power and say, this is this is the way out. And this is the, how we fix this. Uh, and this is what we need to do to resolve it. So we have to have an agenda and a strategy to push collectively and say, this is what we want to get. The problem is we for all of our lives here, for the most part, we've been voting against people and not for people. And so most of our vote presidentially has at least been votes against people. I think President Obama was probably the first person I voted for. <laughs> you know, uh, right. everybody else I voted against. Right. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask you, as, as New Jersey and Newark continues to open and we have indoor dining coming into effect and things are going to start to gradually reopen, people are going to be able to congregate in groups soon. Um, do you see violence? Um, having rising in Newark or do you see you know more crime happening in Newark do you foresee that happening or you know if so how do you plan on I, I pray not you know I think we have a strategy that is proven to work we have to be consistent with it and 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 realize what it is and begin to funnel money in that direction which is what we're trying to do on a partnership between the police department and the community community control of the police community in uh, involvement in the com uh, in, in the city and the strategies, uh, you know, all of these uh, comprehensive based strategies that are originating from community based organizations, those things have to take heed and we have to spread it throughout the city. So we got to be more aggressive on that side. We have to be aggressive, more aggressive on the community side. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. That's all the time we have for this edition. Yes. Thank Thanks you. for having me all the time. Yes.